Whenever us basketball fans have our debates about the greatest player to ever play the game of basketball, usually the first person brought up is Michael Jordan, and then there are names afterwards, such as LeBron James, Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Kobe Bryant, and even Bill Russell. Now, I do not hate bringing up those names. I actually think those names are very valid in the GOAT conversation, but there's always a player that is always left out of the conversation, and that is Wilt Chamberlain. Today we are going to assess Wilt Chamberlain's career and actually analyze it to the point that why is he not ever in the debate for the greatest player of all time? So without further ado, let's get on with this video. Will Chamberlain was the 7 foot 1 center who played in the NBA for nearly two decades. He played from 1959 all the way until 1973. And then when you also look at his physical characteristics, there are no doubts in anybody's mind that these are just something that we have never seen in NBA history. There were reports that his vertical was from 41 inches to 42, and then there are some reports that it was at 48 inches. It's just crazy that someone of his size could actually have that, that kind of physical characteristic. And then when you look at his speed, it was something that was also unparalleled. When he was in track, he ran a 100 yard dash in 11 seconds, and also threw shot put 56 feet. So he had the strength, the speed, and he could jump out of the building, basically. Imagine a Blake Griffin with Derrick Rose point guard speed. And I'm not talking about Derrick Rose now. I'm talking about Derrick Rose in his prime. And if you think Westbrook's faster, then I guess you could use Westbrook as an example. That's just ridiculous. Will Chamberlain throughout the course of his career set numerous NBA records. The single season scoring game record. Also had the single game record. Also had the highest single season scoring average. Also had the single game rebounding record. Highest single season rebounding average. Highest single season rebounding record. Highest single season minutes average. And these just keep going on and on and on. So when it came to the numbers, Will Chamberlain clearly had that in the bag. And then when you look at his highlights and awards, he's a two-time NBA champion, a finals MVP, four-time MVP, 13-time All-Star, All-Star Game MVP in 1960, seven-time All-NBA First Team, three-time All-NBA Second Team, two-time All-NBA First Team Defense and Rookie of the Year, seven-time scoring champion, 11-time rebounding champion, NBA assist leader as well. So Will Chamberlain has been great basically throughout his whole career and even when you look in college, he was the final four most outstanding player, two-time All-American as well, and the University of Kansas retired his jersey. So he's been great basically in sports throughout his whole life. So why am I making a video about Will Chamberlain? Why am I doing this? Because Will Chamberlain, in terms of his greatness, is overlooked by so many people due to the era that he played in. But when you look at the players that he played against, I mean, you're acting like he played against scrubs. He played against players like Bill Russell. He also played against players like Oscar Robertson. Also played against Jerry West, Elgin Baylor, Jerry Lucas, Walt Bellamy, Hal Greer, Bob Pettit, Bob Cousy. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And if you think those players are scrubs, I highly suggest for you to go and research because all of these players were putting up numbers that were just ridiculous. So when you look at Will Chamberlain, why do people say he played against scrubs? And actually, it's crazy that they say everybody who played in the 60s, they were trash because they all played against zero competition, but they were all playing each other. So that is not a valid argument against Will Chamberlain as the greatest player of all time. And when you look at his physical attributes, yes, I said that he was fast and strong and all that, but when you hear the stories of Will Chamberlain, it was just something that is unparalleled to humanity, not just to basketball, but to humanity. There's actually a legitimate story that Will Chamberlain dunked the ball so hard that he broke somebody's foot. Yes, the ball, when he dunked it, it hit the floor so hard that he broke someone's foot. That kind of strength is something that would be just phenomenal to the point that it just makes no sense to you know our minds it's hard to comprehend a ball 
hitting the floor so hard that it breaks the person's foot. And what's crazy is the guy didn't even want to show that it hurt his foot because he was embarrassed. So he acted like he hurt his ankle when he was coming down the court. I mean, that is embarrassment at its fullest extent. And then when you look at the numbers that Will Chamberlain was putting up, it was just ridiculous. He came right out of the gates averaging 38 points, 27 rebounds, 2 assists, also shot 46% from the field, and did that in all 72 games, or should I say, excuse me, 72 games of that season, and averaged 46 minutes per game. I don't care what anybody says. 46 minutes a game? That is just flat out a lot of minutes, and that's just flat out ridiculous. And then, when also you consider the fact that he came right out of the gates, leading the league in scoring, and did that eight straight years. Yes, for eight years, he led the league in scoring. That is just ridiculous. It's crazy. And then, also when you factor in that Will Chamberlain throughout his career, when you look at the players that he's played against, he's put up great numbers against them. When you look at the numbers that he put up against Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in the 71 Western Conference Finals, he put up 22 points per game, 19 rebounds, 2 assists on 49% field goal shooting. Also, Kareem put up 25 points, 17 rebounds, 4 assists on 48% field goal shooting, though he did lose that series. That's a Will Chamberlain at 34 years old going up against a 23-year-old Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And then when you look at the year afterwards, Will Chamberlain put up just 11 points, 19 rebounds, 3 assists, and 6 Six blocks per game. Yes, six blocks per game in the 72 conference finals on 45% field goal shooting. And then Kareem put up 34 points per game, 18 rebounds, five assists, and five blocks per game on 46% field goal shooting. Now, the reason I brought that up is because Will Chamberlain actually won that series and then went on to win the finals and win his first ever finals MVP. So for people to sit here and to just act like Will Chamberlain did not put up numbers against legitimate competition as well, I think it's straight up blasphemy and I think it's disrespectful. Will Chamberlain put up numbers that were amazing. I know 11 points is not something that's, you know, just blowing your mind, but he also had 19 rebounds, 3 assists, and 6 blocks per game against a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar that was 24 years old. Also, he just came off of winning a championship the year prior. It's the conference finals, and Will Chamberlain is 35 years old. He's still doing work on a young Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. So it's clear, at least in my eyes, that Will Chamberlain, it did not matter what competition he was going against because he was putting up great numbers and towards the end of his career, he became a less selfish player and decided to sacrifice numbers, primarily when it came to scoring, in order to benefit the team's winning and their success. I mean, the thing about Will Chamberlain that I will admit that has hurt him basically throughout his whole career was the lack of winning. I mean, for eight straight years, he led the league in scoring and he didn't get a championship. But when he decided to take a step back and actually started passing a bit more, I mean, it's shown as as soon as he just decided to start taking that step back, when he started averaging less than 30 points per game, and he averaged for the first time in his career under 25 points per game, they won the championship that year. So it's clear that Will Chamberlain, yes, the numbers don't really reflect how great he really was due to the fact that he did not have the success as his numbers suggest. But at the end of the day, he was able to change his game in order to fit his team and the players around him. He was willing to sacrifice the numbers. He was willing to do all of that. And when you add his physical characteristics, when you add the things he was able to do on the court, his dominance, the historic numbers that he put up. I mean, this is a big man who averaged nine assists a game and led the league in assists that season. He led the league in every single statistical category except for free throw shooting. There were years that he did that. There were years that he led the league in scoring minutes, rebounds, field goal percentage, also in games played, and he did all of that in one season. There are years that he had NBA records, multiple NBA records in one season. There's a season that he averaged 50 points per game, which we all know, but I'm going to say it again. 50 points per game. I don't care what era you're in. I don't care who you're playing against. 50 points per game, night in and night out, when you lead the league in minutes, also you lead the league in games played, that is just flat out ridiculous. That's something that is out of this world. This man had consecutive seasons where he averaged at least 20 rebounds a game. Consecutively. I mean, this is just something that 
no matter what era you're in, you have to appreciate this kind of greatness. This guy set the tone for basketball. Goaltending, all that was not there when Will Chamberlain was playing. Because of his dominance when it came to shot blocking, they had to regulate goaltending. They had to put up goaltending because of Wilt Chamberlain. He was just that great of a player. I mean, they had to put three seconds in the paint because of Wilt Chamberlain's dominance in the paint. I mean, all these rules that we see today is because Wilt Chamberlain was so dominant that they had to regulate the way the game was being played. They had to change it up so it would be harder for some players because it was so easy for Wilt Chamberlain. He wasn't going against scrubs. Look at the players that I named earlier, Bob Pettit, West Unsealed, Elgin Baylor. These are not scrubs. These are people that Will Chamberlain literally night in and night out was dominating. He was dominating these guys and making them look like children. I mean, look at the clips. Look at the video footage that I'm showing you. The dominance that you see from Will Chamberlain, it is not something that you can just look at and say, oh, it's because he was playing against weak players. He would be dominant in every single era of basketball. This man was a great scorer, great rebounder, great passer. He was efficient as hell. So to sit here and say that he wouldn't be as dominant in other eras, that's fine. But to say he'd be like a DeAndre Jordan or a Ben Wallace, that is where you get disrespectful and blasphemous. Because at the end of the day, he is in the GOAT conversation. He's a top 10 player of all time. And in my opinion, he is clearly the most dominant force in NBA history. So if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up. Comment down below your opinions. Do you agree with me about Will Chamberlain? Is he in the GOAT conversation or not? Comment that down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. Hit the bell next to my name to be notified. Follow me on Twitter and follow me on Snapchat and add me on Instagram. Excuse me, add me on Snapchat and follow me on Instagram. This is your boy, Young Mustard, signing out. Peace.